Hi everyone, it's Taylor. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm an American expat living in Malaysia and I like to share my life and travels with you. Well today, I'm going to take you on a quick trip around Malaysia and show you what Taylor thinks you should do your first visit here. Sound interesting? Stay tuned! Before we get started on today's video, I just wanted to tell you about a translation product that was sent to me by Time Kettle. Now you know I've reviewed one of their products before, and you might have seen that. It was for the Time Kettle Fluent Talk T1. I thought it was good, but now they've sent me another one. This is the Time Kettle Translator Earbuds WT2 Edge, and it's much smaller and easier to carry around. You can see everything that's included, the instruction manual and the actual product, the earbuds. But see how small they are. Just easy to stick in your pocket and carry around when you're traveling. When you first get the earbuds, you just open the instruction book, scan the QR code, and then download the app. And then you'll be all set to go. As I said, there's four different modes. One is the simultaneous mode, where you put one earbud in your ear, and then you give the other earbud to who you're talking to. If you live in a household where someone speaks a different language, this would just be a wonderful, wonderful product. Another mode is the touch mode, where each person puts one of these earbuds in their ear, and instead of it simultaneously just translating everything, it will only translate after you tap on it and speak. And that's really good if you're in really noisy situation. It sort of just makes it just between the two of you. There's also a listening mode. Say you're at a convention or something and listening to someone speak in a foreign language. And you just put it in and listen away and it'll translate for you. And then there's a speakerphone where you put one of these or both in your ears and then you use your phone to translate. And then you'll speak, and then the phone will translate so the listener can hear it in their language. They'll speak, the phone microphone picks it back up, and then puts it back into your earbuds. Couldn't be simpler. That's a good one for when you're out and about. The WT2 Edge has a 95% accuracy in 40 languages and 93 different accents. It has a pretty fast translation speed of 0.5 to 3 seconds. That depends on your Wi-Fi on how fast it's going to translate. Plus, it has offline translation for eight languages. And it has an amazing 12-hour battery life. Three hours in the earbuds, and then 12 hours in the battery case. So if they run out, you just recharge them here quickly. I'm not going to get into all the technical aspects of this amazing product today. But I just wanted you to know about it. If you're planning a trip, it's going to be a really fun thing to have with you. You might have seen my interview with Raymock recently. When I was over there, we tried out these. And so I'm going to put a little demo here for you to see. Hi, I'm here with my friend Raymock, and we're going to show you the simul mode, which you won't be able to hear. We'll tell you if it's working. Hi, I'm Raymock. Saya bermain piano dekat YouTube. Oh, you play the piano. That's fascinating. Tapi penterjemahan ini adalah sangat bagus. Oh, that's good to know that the translation works. You understand. Saya betul-betul faham. Okay, cool. Well, you see how the, you get the idea of that. Now, you would use this with someone you know well, because you're not going to go ask a stranger to put this in your ear. You know, so... But this is for conversations you want to have with people you know well that speak another language and maybe don't speak your language quite as well. So it works pretty good. So we're going to try a different mode now. Now we're going to try the touch mode. This is different than the other one because it doesn't pick up anything unless you touch the earphone first. So I'll start. So Raymar, how long have you lived in Malaysia? Ah, saya sudah tinggal di Malaysia seumur hidup saya. Were you born in Kuala Lumpur? Yeah, saya dilahirkan di Kuala Lumpur. Good. 
Well, you can see how that works. I mean, it's not very obvious to you all watching, but it is working. And this is a better choice if you're in a crowded room because it's not gonna pick up everybody's conversations around you. It's gonna be more directed just to the two speakers. If any of you are interested in purchasing this wonderful product, please look in the description box below where I have a link. As you know, I only promote products that I believe in. So if you're interested, go ahead and get this. It'll be great for your travels. Now back to the video. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, I have probably already convinced you that Malaysia is a wonderful place to visit and live. Some of my viewers though have shocked me in their lack of planning when they're thinking of visiting here or moving here. I've actually had viewers say, oh, I'm gonna move to Malaysia. I'm coming in two weeks. And I write back and I say, well, I guess you have your visa situation sorted. And they write back and say, no, we haven't. And I'm like, oh my gosh, do people really plan so poorly? I hope not. Anyway, I'm gonna give you a few tips on traveling to Malaysia for your first time. This is gonna be guidelines for a relatively short trip to Malaysia. If you have more time, that's wonderful. You can plan to go see some of the other places in Malaysia that I'll tell you about. Okay, probably everyone thinks you should start out in Kuala Lumpur, which is where your plane is gonna most likely bring you into the country. It seems like the obvious place to start out, but I'm only gonna recommend KL if you're really a city person or like exciting nightlife or something like that. If you really wanna see the real Malaysia, don't start in KL because it's too much like the rest of the world if you ask me. I personally prefer a quieter holiday, so I'd start my trip out in Penang. As you all know, I'm extremely familiar with Penang, having lived there for over seven years. But where to stay in Penang? Well, if you just want a quiet vacation by the ocean, then I would pick Batu Ferengi. Now it's quite a bit away from any of the tourist sites, but if you just want to relax, it's the place to be. There's several three to five star hotels there that are all very nice and all on the ocean. And Batu Frangi has a night market too and lots of places to eat, that's for sure. I've stayed in several hotels there. The Lone Pine, which I really like, The Hard Rock, which I didn't like so much, and my favorite, Rasa Sayang by Shangri-La. It is a gorgeous resort. I've stayed there twice. You just can't beat it. It has everything you need for a wonderful vacation. I even had a suite there once, but that was during COVID and that's the only way I could really afford it. But it's lovely. But since Batu Frangi is sort of far from any of the tourist sites, I would suggest staying maybe in Tanjan Bunga or Tanjan Tokong. Now, you know, I lived in Tanjan Bunga, so it's pretty centrally located. Both areas are near the ocean, plenty of shopping and eating, and convenient to the historic Georgetown area. Now my favorite place to stay in Tangent Tokan is the Hampton Hotel, which is right on the ocean, in a lovely hotel with reasonable rates. It's only a few years old. But the next time I'm there, I'm gonna try out the Jazz Hotel. The Jazz Hotel was a wonderful new hotel that closed during COVID, but it's reopened now, so you can enjoy it again. And it is in the perfect location if you ask me. There are also service apartment options like Jazz Suites, where I stayed with my sister. Remember Liz? If you'd rather stay in the historic Georgetown area, there's a lot to choose from there too. There's small hotels like Campbell House, where I've stayed, and I enjoyed that a lot, but it doesn't have a pool or anything. But for five-star elegance, I would stay at the E&O, or the Eastern and Oriental. It's right on the ocean and beautiful. It's historic, and it was built by the people who built raffles in Singapore. I've stayed there a couple times. I think just during COVID though, because otherwise I probably couldn't afford it. But it's a lovely place and very conveniently located. You could walk to almost anything in Georgetown from there. Now I'm gonna tell you a few favorite sites to see according to Taylor. I'm into old historic homes, so don't miss the Blue Mansion. It's a beautifully restored mansion which is now a boutique hotel too. Has a great bar too. Go in there for a cocktail, you'll enjoy it. The Peranakan Mansion is also beautiful too. And instead of blue, it's green. It's a gorgeous museum. I definitely recommend that. There's also Chinese clan houses there. 
My favorite is the Ku Kong Si, very dramatic as you can see in these pictures. But my favorite thing to do in Georgetown is just stroll around, enjoy the beautiful colonial architecture in this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Other sightseeing venues I like is Penang Hill, and you can take a funicular up there. And also up on Penang Hill is Habitat, a wonderful venue. It costs money, but it's worth it. And it has incredible views of the entire island. It's also about 10 degrees cooler up there, so that's nice too. I'd also recommend seeing Intopia, the butterfly farm, and the tropical fruit farm. But those are on the opposite side of the island of Georgetown. And you know, you might not have time to get there, but if you do, it's well worth it, I'd say. Also, when you're in Penang, you're like a 15 minute flight, if that, to Langkawi Island, which is also an incredibly beautiful island. I've been there many times and enjoy it every time. There's lots to do there too, mostly the beaches, and you can swim there. Unlike Penang, unfortunately, you can't really swim in Penang. The water's just not nice enough. But Langkawi is gorgeous, and you can swim to your heart's content there. They also have this amazing cable car that goes up to the top of a mountain and gives spectacular views too. I've also heard that the mangrove tour is nice. I've stayed in a lot of different places there, but my favorite now is probably the Maritis Beach Club, which is right near the heart of things. You can walk to just about everything, restaurants and shopping, everything. And it's a gorgeous property. And I just saw recently on Facebook that it's just been completely renovated. So it should be really nice now. But it was nice when I stayed there too. Another great thing to do in Langkawi is take a day trip to a snorkeling site. Boy, is that nice. It'll take you to these crystal clear waters where you can see all these beautiful tropical fish. Well worth it. So after you've done Penang and Langkawi, I would take a short flight back to KL. This would be a nice break from the islands. KL, as you know, is a world-class city and there's lots to do. But I would stay in the KLCC area, just the heart of everything. There's a beautiful park there, shopping galore, the Soraya KLCC Mall at the base of the Twin Towers. The Twin Towers you have to see. I also recommend a little drive out to Batu Caves. It's fascinating also. A lot of stairs though, so you probably won't see Taylor there. The Pavilion Mall is incredible. It's probably the nicest mall I've ever seen in my life. And there's just a zillion other malls too, if you're not staying in the heart of KLCC. Now I've stayed in several places here, but my favorite has been the Traders Hotel, which is just opposite the Twin Towers. It's a five-star hotel. Mm, it's not the newest or nicest, but it has the most incredible view of the Twin Towers, as you can see here. This is an actual view from my room. Also while in KL, I recommend going to one of the many, many roof bars. But my favorite is Blue at the EQ, which is the Equinox Hotel. Wow, is this a fancy place, but you better get reservations. But it has the nicest view I've ever seen in KL. I've been there a few times. Mm, it's expensive, but you can afford a couple drinks there. Go ahead and splurge, I say. After exploring KL for a few days, I'd hop on down to Malacca. It's just a two hour drive. You could take the bus if you wanted. It's a beautiful city and right on the ocean, but it has a lot of waterways, giving it sort of a Venice in Malaysia feel. I've done a video on Malacca before, and I'm sure you enjoyed that, but it is just a nice relaxing place to stay it's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Not a lot to see there, but it's a nice place to just chill and relax. My favorite place I've stayed there so far is the Baba House. I did a video on that too. It's right in the thick of the historic area, convenient to everything. Malacca is definitely worth a few days of exploring. Well, this itinerary would be an initial introduction to Malaysia in Taylor's book. But if you have more time, there's lots more to see. If you're traveling from the US or the UK or other countries, you could look it up and see what it is for your country, but you'll receive a 90 day visitor pass. So you could stay way longer and explore way more of the country. While you're in Western or Peninsular Malaysia, you could also do a little trip up the East Coast. 
It's gorgeous. And I'm sure you've seen my video where I was recently there at Kwantan. But if you have time, you should check out East Malaysia too. It's amazing. Now, I've been to Sarawak, well, really just Kuching, which is the major city there, and it was just charming and laid back and fun and really a lot of things to see. The Sarawak Cultural Village was a real highlight for me. But there's also Sabah with Kota Kinabalu, and there's mountain climbing, and there's jungle trekking, and there's just everything you can imagine. It's so different than East Malaysia, but so charming in its own way. And if you have enough time, do both East and West Malaysia. That's what I would do. I certainly plan on doing more exploring of East Malaysia. So I hope that gives you a few ideas of your first visit to Malaysia. Another question would be, when should I go? Well, I get this question a lot. A lot of people think there's a cooler time of year, but there really isn't. There's only less rainy maybe, but even then it rains a lot here. So I'd say just avoid March, April, May probably are the hottest times here. Otherwise, you're going to be good to go. Yeah, it might rain, but it doesn't rain like for days at a time. The storms just breeze right through. You might get rained on, but it's not going to kill you. Well, I hope Taylor's plan of a first visit to Malaysia sounds good to some of you. And I hope it entices you to come and see this incredible country. Maybe I'll even see some of you here sometime. That would be amazing. You could purchase your time kettle translator earbuds before the trip. You might not have too much use for them in Malaysia, but if you go off the track to Thailand or other countries, you could use them there, I'm sure. Well, if you enjoyed this video today, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And hit the notification bell too, so you won't miss any of my future videos. Well, that's all I have for today though. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching. Talk to you later, bye. Get, 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 get.